There are countless examples of corrupt, evil, and even criminal cops. But what happens to cops who actually get caught? These are four examples of cops who realized they were going to jail. Starting with Tyler Moody, who was about to get the shock of his life after being brought into the interrogation room. Have you offered your resignation or not? I can keep my job and no. Well, you can't keep your job. Okay. An inmate charged with murder was discovered with a mobile phone and charger. When questioned, Tyler immediately folded and confessed to what he'd done. He expected to just get fired, but he was about to discover providing contraband comes with a much bigger punishment. Of every citizen that we have the privilege to serve, and you've betrayed the trust of the brave and selfless men and women that you've worked alongside for nearly three years. So as of this moment, you're under arrest for bringing a prohibited item, a cell phone into a correctional facility as a third degree felony. Providing a prisoner with a mobile phone carries a sentence of one year in prison. And that's exactly where Tyler is right now, serving it in exactly the same place that he used to patrol as a cop. But unlike Tyler, Stephanie Lazarus didn't get off nearly as easy. Now you're accusing me of this? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? After decades of investigations, DNA evidence revealed that Stephanie was very likely the culprit of a murder committed in 1986. Because of the high stakes nature of the case, the detectives made sure to meticulously plan this interrogation. Stephanie was a really successful detective herself, and she had recently received recommendations for her good work on a theft case. So the detectives used this and brought her in under the guise that they needed help with a case. I don't want to talk about this in the squad room because I, I don't know who people are listening. That's true. That's and if we go to my side, everybody's yeah. always wondering what everybody oh, else yeah, is doing. No okay. An interrogation room is a strange place for such a conversation to take place, so to put her mind at ease, detectives told her this was the place they'd least be likely to be overheard, as the case details were strictly confidential. Sherry Rasmussen's body had been found at her home after being shot three times. At the time, police suspected the murder was a result of a burglary gone wrong, but the case went cold when they couldn't identify the suspect. However, 23 years later, when revisiting the case, detectives found evidence that led them towards Stephanie, a girl who had been trapped in a love triangle with Sherry and her husband, John Rutten. So the detectives decided to bring up John's name to see how she'd react. Are you guys friends, close friends? Yeah, we're very close friends. I mean, yeah. I mean what's this all about? It's a case we're working on, and it involves John, and in there, there's notes and stuff that he, that he knew you and stuff. Oh, yeah, I mean, we good friends. Um lived in the dorms for I lived in the dorms for two years. Was there ever any relationship or anything that developed between you guys? Yeah, I mean we dated, uh, uh -huh. you know, um, I mean, is, what's this all about? Well, it's relating to uh, his wife. Both the detectives and Stephanie have tried to seem as friendly and relaxed as possible around each other, but Stephanie is obviously starting to get very anxious at this point. Even though the detectives gave a somewhat believable excuse, she is now in an interrogation room faced by two detectives being questioned about a girl she supposedly murdered 20 years earlier. Her breathing has become faster, and her language is defensive, and her movements have become more erratic. And you're right. I mean, if you guys are claiming that I'm a suspect, then, you know, I, I got a problem with, you know, with that. Okay. Okay? So, you know, if you're, if you're doing this as an interrogation, you're saying, hey, I'm a suspect. Well, I, now I got a problem with, you know, now you're accusing me of this? Is that what you're, is that what you're saying? Obviously, you know about all the DNA stuff and things of the nature that, you know, gets done on cases nowadays. You know, if we asked you for a, a DNA swab, would you be willing to give us one? Maybe, because <laughs> now, 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 yeah, because now, now I'm thinking I probably need to talk to a lawyer. Stephanie chooses to provide DNA evidence, hoping her willingness to help out would ultimately prove her innocence. But unfortunately for her, just five minutes later, the detectives decide they've heard enough and put her in cuffs. Months later, after a long and arduous trial, a decision was made by the jury. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Stephanie Eileen Lazarus, guilty of the crime of murder of Sherry Rasmussen. We further find the murder was of the first degree. Stephanie was sentenced to 27 years in prison after being hit with a single felony charge of first degree murder. But to this next cop, Jalen Fleer, a single felony charge looks like child's play. Can I ask this? This is something I might, I should have lawyers on. In April 2020, San Diego police received tips that a man had been engaging in 
with a local child. Two months of investigation led directly to Jalen and a mountain of questions that desperately needed answering. So, I know that I have a lot to delve into, but I, I really want to get to know you first, if you don't yeah, mind. Definitely. Okay. So, I'm going to lean back and get comfortable. Um, just because, are you comfortable? Do you want to yeah, take off I'm your good. duty belt? No, I'm good. I'm okay. Good. Can you tell me a little bit about your upbringing? Yeah, so... I will ask what this is about. Yeah, so we're looking into some allegations that were made. We're kind of, it, it started with a Crime Stopper report, so we're just kind of okay. going from there. Um, uh, we did receive um, a picture um, that, um, you know, when we looked into it, it looks similar to you. So I don't know yeah. if you can take a look at the picture and just tell me if you've seen this picture before. Oh, I have like 15 million things here. As soon as the allegations are brought up, Jalen becomes visibly stressed. He leans forward tentatively in his chair, clasps his hands together softly, and clenches his jaw. It's obvious he's worried about whatever he's about to be shown. The detectives have made it clear that he is not currently being detained and is free to leave at any time. However, she is making a noticeable effort to make him feel relaxed, using a bubbly and friendly persona to put him at ease. So this picture right here? Yeah, that's definitely me with the gross one. Okay, so um, this picture right here, how old were you when it was taken? Uh, I don't know, 20. 20? Okay, cool. That makes it very easy. Um, so, as far as like um, the picture, so um, this photo came up in connection with some allegations um, about you communicating with a younger female on Snapchat. Okay, can I ask, is this something I might, I should have lawyers on? Jalen is starting to seem more and more stressed. He begins to sway in his chair more and becomes more closed off with his answers. But the pressure he's feeling now is nothing compared to what the detective is about to lay on him. Um, so, you know, this, like I said, this photo was um, sent to this person, so they were in possession of it. And we can't find any connection or reason why this photo would end up with this particular person if it wasn't shared by someone you may know or yourself. I agree, yeah. I my wife would have done that, so I don't want to know why she would share that, so. Well, along with the photo came some additional information about your personal life. Okay. Um, and based on some of the information you shared with me today, it seems to add up. Okay. The account that shared the photo and the information was called J178211, a seemingly random selection of numbers, until you realize that 17 was his college baseball jersey number, 82 was his high school jersey number, and 2011 was the year he graduated in. If this account was operated by a so-called enemy of Jay, they'd sure done their research. Jay, I'll be very honest, I just, I want to know the truth. Yeah, no, I never even heard of that account. Okay. Have you ever shared any images of your with anyone? Yeah. Okay. And how many times would you say you've done that? A lot. Did you ever share any videos of you having with anyone? With anyone? No. I've always had personal videos of me in my life. I was hit. And my ex actually had one, Jalen then rightly decides that he's already answered enough of the detective's questions and asks him for a lawyer. However, unfortunately for him, he's quickly handed a search warrant, allowing the police to seize DNA, his phone, and his car. Police used this to gather a mountain of evidence against Jalen and, just a few weeks later, turned himself in. Jalen was charged with 20 felonies, including engaging in lewd acts with children under the age of 14 pandering children under 16, and engaging in the child under the age of 16. A few months later, he was sentenced to 12 years in prison. But this disturbing act doesn't even compare to the atrocities that Daniel Holtzclaw committed. Daniel was brought in for interrogation after a report came in that he'd made an unlawful traffic stop and forced the female driver to remove her clothing and perform on him. What detectives didn't know was that this was just one of dozens of other crimes that Daniel would find himself accused of. So we have no misunderstanding because, and maybe I didn't key in on some things, I want you to, you turn in your activity card, walk me through it all again. Turn my activity card, I leave out station, turn off my computer, I'm done for the night, head left, go westbound on 50th okay. from Prospect. About block down, I see a Grand, Grand Prix in the outside lane. I was on the inside lane, directly in front of me. Car swerved at that time. I kind of fall behind of it. 
Lincoln. I didn't want to light it up at, at the at the stop sign, so I waited till it go forward. And just lit it up just to the west. And then that's when I made a traffic stop. Daniel recounts his version of events from that night. Cops said that he didn't report on the stop dispatch, run a records check on the driver, or even let them know that he just logged off for the night. But Daniel just explains that everything happened so fast he just forgot to do all of that and made the traffic stop off the grid. However, Daniel doesn't seem 100% sure while recounting this evening. He takes unusually long breaks between statements and speaks in incomplete sentences. The true reality of cases is that it's almost usually impossible to get a conviction as long as there was no video or photo evidence of the event. The victim barely ever has any ability to prove that the suspect did what they did, as in most places, they are innocent until proven guilty. This is likely why this turned out to be one of 36 charges eventually brought against Daniel, each more disgusting than the last. CSI is processing your car right now. Right. And when we stepped out, they found some pubic hairs right in here. Could they be yours? No, that's not, I didn't pull my, I didn't do anything right there. Did she? No. But she you think they could be. No, it's not. No. Nothing of mine. Your pubes couldn't be? No. Right there? No. You seem a little extra worried whenever you're talking about seeing her boobies. Mm -hmm. You sure she just didn't flash you? I can't. She did not flash. I, I don't want to say I can't recall, but I'm pretty positive she didn't flash. I see a pair of titties. She went she like this, but nothing as far as I'm going like crazy looking. Lifting, lifting the shirt. Um, no, this whole situation and uh, just, it's kind of scary. It I is get, scary, and I, I don't like. I don't want my rep to be. Everything's about in law enforcement. I don't, three years on, I know that, but everything's about your rep. Absolutely. And I don't want this to fall on my rep. Unfortunately for Daniel, though, this absolutely would affect his rep, as the DNA tests on the hair found in the car came back as a perfect match, and statements given by his girlfriend directly contradicted his story. So after the interrogation, he was placed on administrative leave, but just two months later, 12 more women came forward with claims, and he was subsequently arrested. Verdict, count one, battery. Defendant is guilty of the crime as battery and set punishment at eight years. Count two, procuring lewd exhibition. Not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Count three, burglary in the first degree. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of burglary in the first degree, nor lesser included. Count four, procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. Daniel was found guilty on 18 of the 36 charges and sentenced to 263 years in prison without the possibility of parole.